why I put it back onto the wheel is now I can go back. It's really thick. So down here at the support system, I can trim this down a little bit. If it's too thick, if it's like an inch thick, it'll take about two weeks to dry. So if I, I want to trim this down so it's nice and straight, um, things like that. I don't want it to have a lean because if it has a lean, you know, because we're going to cut these up in individual tiles, it will fall forward or not stand up by itself. Okay. So my suggestion is we're not going to cut these off the bats. We'll cut them down vertically, but we'll let them just pop off the bats. So I hope everybody, you know, they'll dry off the plastic ones, they'll dry off the wood ones and things like that too. So I'm just going to take some time to clean up mine. I didn't get that glaze catcher ring down here at the bottom. Now would be the time to do it. So let's take your little loop tool. Also trim the interior. So again, I'm just cleaning it up. Yes, these are glaze tests and everything like that, but yet we still want them to look clean and presentable like our work. And this brings me back to also, a lot of you have your bowls done, but say your bowl is really thick, you can trim it on the interior. You don't always have to trim on the exterior, on the outside of the form. You can trim in the middle before you flip it over and trim it. So that's kind of why I like to keep everything on the bat until like I'm completely done. I'm not adding any water to this. Go back, clean it up. We clean it up because we don't want any of those grog marks to affect our glaze. You didn't put any kind of texture on it. This would be also a time where you could go back in and carve your texture. Just why do we have carved textures? Because we want to see what glaze does when it goes into the surface. Does it get darker? Does it run? Build up? So it's just a little trick. Okay, once I got that done, um, I have these decorating discs. So I have this one, then I have two more up on the table. These discs are broken down and even. So there is, so you can see that there's four. So if you follow all the green lines, you can break your pieces up to, up in fours. If you follow the blue, six, blacks, eight, 10 is red, 12 is yellow. So I can center this on my pieces. I do have this, so if, if you ever want to break yours up in odd numbers, I have these in odd also. So in case you wanted to, like you wanted to fold a rim over or you wanted to cut one of your pieces so it's perfectly done correctly, this is how you do it, okay? So I'll just take this, place this perfectly on my piece. Okay, once I have that, I'm going to do 12s. So I can look at it right now and 12 from this line, even though it's green, all the numbers are above it. I know that this is going to be a 12. So I'm just going to make a mark. Uh, I'm just going to all the 12s.
make sure I got them all. This one, oh, that one. And by before I do this, I want to make sure that there's a good distance. So that's a good two, two and a half inches between them. If it's only like from the yellow to the black, that's going to be a really thin glaze test. You're not going to learn much from that. So we want to at least try, maybe you won't be able to do 12. Maybe you can only do 10 on yours. Do 10. I'd rather them be a little bit wider than as skinny. Okay. Got that done. Grab my tool real quick. Like I said, everybody has one of these now. I put it on their shelf, on your in your bucket, things like that. So now what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to try to get them as straight as can be. So that's why I like to look down on them. Just go all the way through. When you get down to these areas, you're going to have to hold the individual ones. See how my wheels make that noise? Try not to do that because it always goes up the correct way. That's just grinding the gears backwards. Okay, they're all cut. The next thing you need to do is like, we have, all, we have a pegboard in the glaze room with all these hooks. Our goal is to, we're gonna hang the ones in there that you, the three that you create. Okay, so people, students can say like, well, I like this one. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is just take this tool and in the middle, about, a, you know, I would say three fourths down, just twist. Don't worry about those little things to clean up. You can clean those up when it dries. You can just sand them off. So as you can see, I put a little hole through it. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to cut them off the bat now. Since this is on the wood bat, they will just pop off. Okay, if I try to cut them off, I'll, or I'll, this ring will go into an oval and maybe it will affect them from standing up or anything. But these are completely done. So I don't need to cover these. Once I get everything done, Get the hole drilled, I don't need to cover these. I can just set this off and let them pop off the bat by themselves. Okay, but the reason why I leave them on here is right now I know that they're structurally strong. They're standing up, they're supporting one another by themselves. It's perfectly good. Okay, so once you're done, again, just set them out to completely dry. Don't put them in the bottom shelf right here or the middle shelf. Air does not get to them. Set them on top. Um, and then they'll be ready, you know, I'll try to get in here over the weekend and fire them, okay? Uh, we do have a lot of bisque building up. So again, I think next week, I'm gonna go through the whole process as actually glazing, waxing the bottoms, dipping, pouring, things like that. And then the week after that, we're gonna do our first kiln fire. Okay, so planning about a, a week and a half out, we'll have a glaze firing. So glaze firing is, um, one day in class, so that Monday, not the next week, but the Monday after, will take about an hour to load the whole kiln. 
Okay. Once it's loaded on Tuesday, I will fire the kiln all day. So I started at six o'clock in the morning and it fires till seven o'clock at night. That next Wednesday, I know everybody will want to see the kiln and everything. We can't open it. So Wednesday has to cool off. Thursday, I will open it, but I will not unload it. I want you guys to be here when we unload it. Okay, so it won't get unloaded until another week afterwards. So you'll have to be patient with me. Christmas will have to wait a whole week after it's fired. But it'll be worth it. Okay. Also remember, next week we are starting, on Monday, we're starting plates. So you will be required to do six plates. And a plate is about the size of your palm of your hand. So if I open my hand up, that should be the middle portion of the size of plates I'm going to have. That's a good proportion to eat. And then the rim will be out here. So you guys practice learning to compress to get these a little bit wider. That will help you with the plates. Um, I put the glaze research up on Canvas, correct? Remember to look for five. I did an example of how I would do it. I just screenshot the recipe, added it, and took the screenshot of the actual test tile. If you're not finding any glazes, right behind this door, there's a whole bunch of glaze books. There's one that says Complete Guide to High Fire. And it has every color in there too, then maybe you want to look at that too. And so if you don't like the online part, there is a complete guide to high fire in there. Um, also today, I'm going to put up the personal series piece for you to start doing your research on your personal series. If you have questions about today, please feel free to come ask me, talk to me. Um, some students doing the first personal series, try to, to try to like go for a big, like I'll tell you like, okay, calm down. Maybe that's your third personal series. There's nothing wrong with that. But just hold on to that research because again really think about what you know how to make what you're capable of throwing the amounts of clay don't try to like stress yourself out so much that you're just not going to get it done it is worth 100 points so um it looks like everybody's kind of trimming their bowls everybody has like the bowls i did load the cart back up so if you have bowls on your shelves that need to come over here or mugs please get them over here so they can get into the kiln. Because again, once this is once they're dry, they go into the kiln to be fired. So the more bisque you have, it'll take you less time in the glaze room. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so if you just came in, there are some mugs on the table. Um, I will kind of go through and see who they are. But other than that, the rest of the day is yours to work on your personal series, to throw bowls, mugs, practice throwing different shapes and forms things like that, okay? But the rest of the class is for you to work.